In this video, we are going to look about uh, retirement sum, a five mark sum, which deals with share of profit and goodwill, the adjustment of goodwill. So the sum goes as Vijayan, Sudan, and Suman are partners who share profits and losses equally in the capital ratio. So these three are the partners, Vijayan, Sudan, and Suman are the partners, and they are sharing profits and losses in the e. Equally in a capital ratio is you must go and have a look at the capital in the liability side of the balance sheet given in the problem. So the capital in the liability side is 70,000, 50,000 and 30,000. So Cancelling all the amount of zeros which they have as common, we have 7 is to 5 is to 3. So the ratio is 7 is to 5 is to 3 and all our prime numbers, we cannot simplify them any more further. So the capital ratio is 7 is to 5 is to 3. Then they have given the balance sheet as on 31, 12, 2018. So whenever we have a balance sheet, it is that we have to go and see what are the accumulated profits, reserves and losses which they have given. So on the liability side of the balance sheet, we have a general reserve which is 18,000 which has to be divided in the capital ratio. And when it is on the liability side, it goes to the credit, that is opposite side. If it is on the left side, then it will go to the right side of the account. If it is on the right side, it goes into the left side of the account. So it is on the liability side. Therefore, it goes to the credit side of the capital account when we open it. Then they have said, Suman died on 31-3-2019. So the partner Suman has expired on 31-3-2019. On the death of Suman, the following adjustments are made. So, in this, they have given buildings which is valued and stock which is depreciated. Both are relating to the revaluation account which we will start first. Then they have given goodwill of the firm which is valued at 36,000 which has to be adjusted among the partners in the capital account. Then they have given a share of profit that which also has to be adjusted among the partners in the capital account and the balance sheet. So, and then they have said prepare necessary ledger account and balance sheet immediately after the death of Suman. So, first account which we are going to open is a revaluation account. So, the format for the revaluation both on the credit side as well as on the debit side is ready. So, let's go into the adjustments and start with the revaluation account. The first adjustment given there is billing is to be revalued at 1 lakh. So, whenever we have 2 or at in the problem, we should compare it with the balance sheet given and find out whether the particular asset or the liability is increased or decreased. So, here building is revalued at 1 lakh. So, when we look at the asset side, building is only 80,000. So, when it is only 80,000, that is the old uh, balance in the balance sheet and the new balance is 1 lakh, the value of building has increased. So, when a building, an asset value is increased, it goes to the credit side of the revaluation account. So, on the credit side of the revaluation account, by buildings account, the difference of 1 lakh and 80,000, which is 20,000, will be recorded. Next point we have is the stock to be depreciated by 5000. So, as previously mentioned, 2 and at means we must find the difference of and we have to compare and find the difference. When other than 2 and at, we can just take the value which is given in the particular adjustment and write it directly. So, here stock is an asset and stock is depreciated. Therefore, it goes to the debit side of the revaluation account. So, to stock account. 5,000. So now we are going to leave roughly around 6 lines on either side and draw the grand total for the revaluation account in the outer column on both the sides, the debit as well as on the credit. So when comparing 20,000 on the credit side and 5,000 on the debit side, 20,000 is the greatest total so I am going to put 20,000 in the grand total for both the sides. Now coming to the least side. So the least side is a debit side which is only 5000. So here the balance is going to fall. The balance which we get is called as a revaluation profit which is going to be shared among all the partners. Even the deceased partner will get a share of it. So the revaluation profit on the debit side which will be transferred to all the three partners capital account. So now we are going to first find the answer. So 20,000 the grand total minus 5,000 we get 
the answer for revaluation profit as 15,000. See that you write it again, the so last partner in the outer column. So now this 15,000 has to be divided in the capital ratio for the partners. So here in the working note, the revaluation profit is 15,000 and the ratio given is 7 is to 5 is to 3. So add up 7, 5 and 3. We get 15. So we are going to first divide the 15,000 by this 15. So 15,000 divided by 15 will give us 1,000. So this 1,000 is going to be multiplied for each partner according to his capital ratio. So Vijayan's revaluation profit will be the 1000 rupees into 7. The order doesn't change. If it's 7 is to 5 is to 3, 7 for Vijayan, 5 for Sudan. So 1000 into 5 and 1000 into 3 for Suman. So these values are going to be put up in the revaluation account. So 7000 for Vijayan, 5000 for Sudan and 3000 for Suman. So when you add, you will get back the revaluation profit, which is 15,000. So let's take these three values and put it inside the revaluation account. So in the revaluation account, on the debit side, 7,000, 5,000 and 3,000. So when we add, we get the value 15,000 in the outer column. So this is the revaluation account. So these profit which we got is going to be transferred to the capital account of the partner. So next step, we are going to open the capital account. Next, we've written out the format of the capital account on the debit side as well as on the credit side. The format goes as particulars with the partner's name in the column for the capital account. So, whenever we start with the capital account, we always must start with the credit side because capital account is credit by balance. So, the first item on the credit side is going to be the opening balance which will be written as by balance brought down. Take this by balance brought down from the balance sheet liability side which they have given as capital account Vijayan, Sudan and Suman. So that is going to be written here for the three partners. So for Vijayan it is 70,000, for Suman it is 50,000 and for Sudan it is 50,000 and Suman it is 30,000. The next is we are going to bring the revaluation profit from the revaluation account into the capital account. So the revaluation profit which we got is on the left side page. So always remember whenever we transfer anything in partnership, we are going to transfer it from the left to the right, just the opposite. If we are transferring anything from the right side page, so the right to the left it goes. So debit will go to the credit credit will be transferred to the debit side. So we got the revaluation profit on the debit side. So this is going to be transferred into the capital account on the credit side. So come to the credit side and write down by revaluation profit. So either you can write by revaluation account or you can write revaluation profit also. So here they have given seven, we have split it up into the capital ratio so 7000 5000 and 3000 for the three partners is done next is transfer the accumulated profits reserves and losses from the balance sheet given in the problem so in the balance sheet given in the problem we got a general reserve of 18000 on the liability side so that is going to be brought down to the capital account on the credit side so this general reserve 18,000 also has to be split among the partners in the capital ratio. So we got general reserve 18,000 and the ratio is 7 is to 5 is to 3. When we add, we get 15. So 18,000 divided by 15. I'm going to divide it in three timetables. So 15 goes 5 times and 18 goes 6 times. Now I'm going to do it in five timetables itself. So five goes once, six goes once, the remainder of one, ten goes two times. So I get an answer of 1,200 over here. So this 1,200 I'm going to multiply for Vijayan, Sudan and Suman. So Vijayan's general reserve is 1,200 into seven, which is 8,400. Sudan's general reserve is 6,000. And Suman's general reserve is 3,600. So when you add, you should get back the 18,000 on the whole. So these values are going to be transferred into the capital account now. So moving back into the capital account, we've written general reserves. So 8,400 for Vijayan, 6,000 for Suman and 3,600 for, sorry, 
6000 for Sudan and 3600 for Suman. So, the general reserve is also split. So, the remaining two things which we have to transfer it is the goodwill and the average profit which we have to find and transfer it to the capital account of the partner and the balance sheet. So, first let's figure out the goodwill. So, they've given goodwill of the firm as 36,000 in the third adjustment. So, this is goodwill of the firm. So, first we are going to find goodwill of the deceased partner Suman. So, his share of goodwill we are going to find. So, Suman's share of goodwill will be 36,000 goodwill of the firm into his profit sharing ratio. So, his profit sharing ratio is 3 by 15. So, I am going to cancel the 3 and the 15 as 5 times, 5 goes once, 36 goes 7 times and 10 goes twice. So, 7200 is Suman's share of goodwill which is going to be split up to the partners in the gaining ratio. If the gaining ratio is not given in the problem, it will go according to the old ratio. So, in this problem, they have not given us a gaining ratio. So, we are going to go according to the old ratio for the continuing partners. So, here I am going to give it for Vijayan and Sudan who are the continuing partners. So, they are going to do it in the ratio 7 is to 5. Either first I can add it and divide the 7200 and then do or I can straight away do it like this also that is 7200 into 7 by 12. And here also 7200 into 5 by 12. So, this way also I can do. Or I can divide by this 12 directly and then multiply by 7 and 5 for Sudan. So, when I divide by 12, it goes 6 times for both the parties. So, 6 into 7 is 42 followed by 2 zeros. 6 fives are 30 followed by 2 zeros. So, when I add, I get back the 7000. 200 for the partners. So, these two values are going to be recorded into the capital account on the basis of a journal entry. So, the journal entry is the continuing partners account debtor to the deceased partner. So, the continuing partners are Vijayan and Sudan for this sum and the deceased partner is Suman. So, Vijayan is getting a share of 4200 and Sudan is getting a share of 3000 rupees whereas Suman's share of goodwill is on the total of 7200. So, these values are going to be adjusted in the capital account. They have not asked for any journal entry but it is quite comfortable to adjust it when we have a journal entry written out. So, that's why roughly I have written out the journal entry. So, first I am going to go to Vijayan's capital account. Remember the capital account which we start has all the three partners in them split up as columns. We are not doing capital account individually for all the three partners. It is together. So, when I do Vijayan, Vijayan's capital account, I should go to the debit side and write the opposite account which is 2 Suman's capital account. So, moving on into the capital account, I go to the debit side of the capital account and I write to Suman's capital account to Suman's account. So that is I will put the value of Vijayan that is 4200 which we got in Vijayan's column. So Vijayan column represents the capital account of Vijayan. Likewise the same for Sudan is going to do. Sudan's capital account data to Suman's capital account. So, we must go to the debit side of Sudan's capital account or the capital account which we have opened and write to Suman's capital account and put the value which is 3000. So, coming to the debit side of the capital account, we have already recorded to Suman's account over here. So, we are going to put the value inside Sudan. So, record the 3000 rupees into Sudan's account. That is his column. So, next we are going to move into the next part of the journal entry. So, the next part of the journal entry is Suman's capital account which is in the credit. So, you should go to the credit side and write by Vijayan's capital account and by Sudan's capital account. So, coming to the credit side, so I am going to write by Vijayan's capital account and by Sudan's capital account 
and I'm going to put the value. This is for Sudan. So the value has to go inside Sudan's. Sorry, this is for Suman. So the value has to go inside Suman's column. So Vijayan is getting 4,200 and Sudan is getting 3,000 rupees as his share of goodwill. So this is how goodwill is going to be adjusted. So next, the last one we are going to do is the adjustment of the average profit. So the fourth adjustment if you see share of profit from the closing of the last financial year to the date of death on the basis of the average of three completed years profit before death they have given. So three years 2016, 17 and 18 three years of profit is being given that is 40,000, 50,000 and 30,000 respectively. So we are going to get the average profit of it and we are going to divide it and find out the share of average profit for the deceased partner and give it to him so now we are first going to add the three years profit so I get 1 lakh 20 thousand as my total profit so average profit is nothing but the addition of all the profits divided by the number of years so total profit is equals to 1 lakh 20 thousand divided by one two three years of profit we've got so when i divide three in and twelve in three time tables i get forty thousand as my average profit so this forty thousand is the average profit of the firm so now we are going to find out the average profit which is relating to the deceased partner his share of average profit so Suman's share of profit is the average profit which is 40,000 into Suman's share. So we have the capital ratio right in that we are going to take only Suman's share which is 3 by 15 into till his up to his date of death. So he has expired on 31-3-2019 and the last year of profit which they have given is about 2018. So three months of profit which we have to include here so three by twelve that is counting from jan to the date of death which is in march so cancelling it we get three goes once twelve goes four times three goes once fifteen go five times four goes once forty thousand go ten thousand times and five goes once and ten thousand goes two thousand times so we get suman's share of profit which is two thousand rupees this also is going to be adjusted on the basis of a small journal entry. So I have roughly written out the journal entry. Profit and loss suspends account data to the deceased partner's capital account. So the profit which he has got is 2000 rupees in the sum. So the 2000 rupees will be transferred to Suman's capital account. So here in this journal entry, Suman's capital account is in the credit. So go to the credit side of the capital account and write profit and loss suspends account and put the 2000 rupees in to Suman's capital column. So we've come to the credit side of the capital account where we have finished with the goodwill lastly and now this profit and loss suspense account goes into it. And the value of it goes into the deceased partner's column 2000. So with this the capital account is over. So generally a capital account shows a broad carry down on the debit side and the brought down on the credit side so i'm going to draw the grand total on both the sides on the same line and here in this problem when we take they have not given us the way in which the deceased partner is being settled whether he's paid immediately or any type of loan account is there or what. So since he's deceased, the partner cannot receive anything as money or as a loan. So the partners, the deceased partner's executor will come into the scene. So when they are receiving money, it will go to the executor's account. When it is going to be converted into a loan which is going to be paid in the future, it is going to be Suman's executor's loan account. So first thing is here... We are going to get the debit side. We are going to get the balance carried down for the continuing partners of Vijayan and Sudan. So I'm going to put a dash for Suman. Likewise, Suman's balance will be transferred to Suman's, that is the deceased partner's executor's loan account. 
So Vijayan and Sudan will not have anything in it. So let's go and add the credit side of Vijayan account. So when we add Vijayan's capital account, we get 85,400 for him. So this is the greatest total which we get on the credit side. See that you write it as a grand total on both the sides. Now coming to the debit side, we have to get the carry down for Vijayan. So 85,400 minus 4,200, we get 81,200 as a balance carry down for Vijayan. Next, we are going to move into Sudan. So, adding up Sudan, we get 61,000. So, 61,000 is going to be the grand total for Sudan on both the sides. So, 61,000 minus 3,000, we get rupees 58,000 as a balance carried down for Sudan. Next, moving on into Suman, the deceased partner. So when we add up Suman's column, we get 45,800 as a total. So put that as a grand total on both the sides for Sudan, sorry, Suman. So this 45,800 is going to be paid to Suman's executor's loan account. So go to the executor's loan account and put 45,800. 800 over there so it is going to be treated as a loan which will be paid in the future so now this balance carry down which we got which we have got for vijayan and sudan has to be transferred to the opposite side so by balance brought down 81,258,000 for Vijayan and Sudan, it makes it quite easier to figure it out and write it in our balance sheet. So that's why we bring it down. So next we are going to move on into our balance sheet. So let's start with our balance sheet. We've written out liabilities, rupees, rupees and assets and rupees, rupees. So whenever we start with the balance sheet, it is uh, quite simple when we start with the adjustments first. So the adjustment, the first adjustment which is given is buildings. Building is an asset. So go to the asset side and write down buildings first. And when we look into the balance sheet which is given in the problem, the building is 80,000. See that you write down the 80,000 in the inner column. And in the adjustment, they've said that it is increased to 1 lakh. Right? It is to be valued at 1 lakh. That means it is increased. So increase in the sense it is appreciation. So appreciation is 20,000. This value you can get it from the revaluation account also. So put the addition of the both in the outer column which is 1 lakh. Next adjustment is stock. Stock is also an asset. So write it on the asset side. Go to the balance sheet and get the stock value which is 45,000. Here they have said stock is depreciated by 5,000. So the same by uh, 5,000 will come here. So depreciation. So depreciation is decrease in the value of asset because of the wear and tear. So minus depreciation which is 5,000. So we get 40,000 for stock. Goodwill has already been adjusted and share of profit, the profit and loss suspense account will come on the asset side. So you can write down profit and loss suspense account 2000 rupees on the asset side which we have adjusted for the deceased partner. Next, the remaining of the items which don't have any kind of adjustments, we are going to write, fill it up in the asset side first. So, we've done with all the adjustments. So, now we are looking into the balance sheet and filling up the remaining items. So, the remaining items are debtors, which is 25,000 and cash at bank, which is 20,000, cash in hand. which is 15,000. So all the three comes into the balance sheet asset side. So with this, the asset side is over. Next, we are going to move into the liability side. So when we start with the liabilities, always start with the capital account. So here, the capital account will be the capital account of Vijayan 
and sudan alone the continuing partners alone and we can easily take out the capital account from the balance brought down which we have written in the capital account there when we started it so this balance brought down for vijayan and sudan will go into the liability side so for vijayan's capital account 81200 and sudan's capital account is 58000 So add it and put the value in the outer column. So we get one lakh thirty-nine thousand two hundred for the capital account. Next, we are going to write the executor's loan account, which we mustn't forget because the deceased partner is not paid immediately. So Suman's executor's loan account. So we have to take this value from the capital account. So on the capital account debit side, we got two Suman's executor loan account forty-five thousand eight hundred, which is going to go into the liability side. So forty-five thousand eight hundred. So with this, the adjustments are over. So now the remaining of the items are only the creditors, which we are going to write on the liability side, which is seventeen thousand. Goodwill has already been adjusted. So now draw the grand total on both the sides. and the answer for both the side has to be the same so the balance sheet is tallied with 2 lakh 2000 on the asset side as well as 2 lakh 2000 on the liability side also if my video was helpful please do subscribe comment like and share